Okay guys, it's your boy SDPK Sermlin and welcome back to our painting series of painting every single Pokemon. Uh, this is episode 2, last of week we did Bulbasaur and today we are here with Ivasaur. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase on this one. Uh, a majority of this video is actually me painting the background and not actually painting Ivasaur. So to help keep you entertained while I paint the background in the background of the video, I figured I could lay some Pokemon facts and knowledge and lore onto you about Ivasaur. And so to do that, we're going to go straight to the Pokédex and pull it straight from there. So coming straight up from the official Pokédex from Pokemon.com, says that Ivasaur has a height of 3 feet and 3 inches, with a general weight of 28.7 pounds. It is the sea Pokemon and it has the ability Overgrow. And the Pokedex entry says, when the bulb on its back grows large, it appears to lose the ability to stand on its hind legs. And the other entry says, exposure to sunlight adds to its strength. Sunlight also makes the bud on its back grow larger. So from what I gather from this, um, is kind of moving away from the frog aspect and more into the dinosaur kind of lizard reptile aspect of possibly them sunbathing a lot kind of like a turtle or something to help photosynthesize and grow the bulb on its back to possibly help it to evolve in the future into Venusaur. Also I imagine since its bulb on its back is so heavy it now can't climb trees because it can't use its hind legs to stand on. And I think from the official art you can really see that Bulbasaur has like this uh, kind of small cuddly look to it. But Ivysaur is like totally more aggressive instantly. Like Bulbasaur really wants to be your friend and is kind of just a little goofball. But Ivysaur is like been watching too much Sigma Chad energy videos and now is a, the bully of your high school <laughs> also to drop a little bit more lore on you uh, the first episode of the cartoon slash anime that Ivysaur premiered in was a chancy operation from season one of the anime episode 44 where he was a sick Pokemon being healed by, I assume, a Chansey. I haven't seen it in a very long time. I actually had to look it up to see what episode precisely he was uh, premiered in. And uh, it gave me some more lore that uh, James actually used a rental IV, the Pokemon League Admissions Exam, from, I believe the episode is in the Ultimate Test. Um, which raises a couple questions for me. I didn't know that rental Pokemon were a thing. I guess if you were from a town that didn't have a professor or were too far away from a professor, you could just rent a Pokemon. And from there, you could get a Pokeball and catch your own Pokemon and then give that Pokemon back. And now that I think about it, I do remember somewhere either in games or the anime, seeing rental Pokemon or hearing them mentioned. I suppose it would be something kind of similar to like the Safari Zone, except uh, you have a Pokemon with you. So that's pretty cool. So to talk about the painting a little bit, uh, I've been focusing a lot on the backgrounds for these past couple paintings uh, for the whole project series um, I was focusing so far on these backgrounds and I'm not sure if that's something that I want to continue with uh, I was thinking about the story for this evolution chain more so than the actual Pokemon for that painting you know so like in the first painting I did Bulbasaur's were kind of just like hanging out and I wanted to have a nice painting that you could have on its own where you could see oh this is a nice painting not just a nice Pokemon painting and I really tried to embrace that here in this painting by kind of giving it 
distinct um, plane changes. The background is very distinct from the middle ground and the middle ground is somewhat distinguishable from the foreground whatnot and you know you have different things going on in each plane uh, majority of the Pokemon do wind up on the foreground but in the mid ground I really wanted to focus on painting trees individual trees in the last painting I did trees but they were more so clumped together and I noticed that people when they saw the painting they had a hard time understanding that those were trees and a lot of people thought they were rocks or like a cliffside so I really wanted to let people know that this is a forested jungle kind of grassland next to the river and instead of just somewhere with a bunch of rocks <laughs> anyways I assume if you've made it this far into the video you like what you're seeing so if you do then maybe think about hitting that like button, subscribing, and commenting. Uh, I have a prompt for you if you want to comment something down below. I'd love to know what you think the ideal environment for an Ivysaur is. Is it kind of like a swamp or is it kind of like a grassland, maybe a jungle? Uh, myself, I've had a hard time like pinpointing this because I feel like they would be in a jungle but perhaps they would actually be kind of like just in a general forest. I feel like it's a very general kind of Pokemon you would find everywhere. Kind of like a green anole or something or a gecko. It's just when you go outside, you see one. But when I think about that, right, I've never seen an actual... You, you don't see any starter Pokemon in any of the games besides when you first see them. So how common are these Pokemon? Are they actually endangered? Maybe let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Uh, I think about these things a lot. It's kind of weird, right? Like, Pokemon have to eat something too, right? Like, are they eating other Pokemon? I know this is a kids-oriented game and cartoon kind of series, but realistically here, Pokemon eat other Pokemon. Maybe not like... The Bulbasaur evolution because they're kind of basically just plants or like any of the plant Pokemon in general. But you know Sharkpedo out there eating Magikarps. Like, let's be honest with ourselves. Anyway guys, I really appreciate y'all watching this video and uh, I love you guys. I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, coming up soon we got the money and glamour shot so stick around for that. And uh, peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully in a week. I hope it doesn't take me longer than a week. I'm trying to get these done on a weekly schedule. But, you know, life kind of comes in the way most of the time. Uh, hopefully I'll get 52 paintings of Pokemon done in a year. And, uh, yeah, your support will mean a lot in helping me continue this journey. So, uh, peace out. Love y'all. Thanks for watching.
All right. So, you saw the Bulbasaur. Yeah. The Bulbasaur was awesome. Yeah. You have the Bulbasaur on you? I do because I want to show you something. Oh. Grab the first one. The front one? Yeah. Or this one? That one. This one? Yeah. Okay. That is Ivysaur. Oh. Yes. I see the water over here. That's awesome. I remember the water in the Bulbasaurs. And I, I feel like it's going to do... Ooh, I see how you got this changing into something that looks a little bit more murky. Yeah. Like swampy looking. Nice, nice. These look very similar to the mountains. I think we had talked about you... Uh, I'm going to connect all of them. Yeah. How do you Dude, think the Ivysaur looks? This one right here, I love him. He looks like he's like Papa Ivysaur. This one over here, man, he looks fierce. I love it. The flowers look really good. I feel like that one is like the alpha one. The alpha? And he's like telling them to like get their stuff together. <laughs> I mean, if we're going off of like Legends Arceus, like uh, there are alphas out there. Um, like just bigger, stockier versions of the other Pokemon that are out there that are higher level. So yeah, dude, this is a whole vibe. And you know, that's like in the past. And I felt like just from these first two pictures like this feels like pokemon before humans got involved you know yeah all I, natural habitats and stuff i really like it this do you want to awesome. put this one next to it yes let's see how they connect so okay this one right here hasn't been varnished yet because i need to color correct okay yeah i but see you, for the yellows yeah. and the oranges but also you can see that i bought the wrong canvas size <laughs> i thought that was a 20 i thought that was a um 18 by 24 okay. but this one is so it's a little that's the only one that's going to be that size and also the only one that's going to be on a, a panel instead okay yeah but that'll make it unique the first it's like progression i feel like that's pretty sick though all of them are going to connect dude this looks so awesome i love it like um oh man i love the difference in the baby bulbasaur up to the, like the teenage angst of the ivy sword yeah i mean if you think about it it evolves at like 14 or 16 so you got like this whole this so whole vibe the pokemon facts is like for this one ivy sword he loses his ability to stand on his hind legs so they can't climb trees anymore oh and also he's like two feet tall supposedly and like 50 okay. pounds or something holy crap yeah. he's a chonkers Dude, I love the cloud up there, too. Dude, that looks so good accenting off the top of the mountain. Heck, yeah. Oh, and all the flowers out here to accent the petals on the backs. This is gorgeous, man. Oh, it's got me so excited to see Venusaur. Yeah. I want to see all three of them next to each other. This looks so good, man. Heck, Thank yeah, you. dude. Thank you so much for blessing me with this view. I, Dude, like, I don't see why anybody <laughs> wouldn't want this, like, on their wall. Like... Oh my goodness, it's gonna be beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Michelle? Muy excited. Good job.